Hi guys. Today on the workbench we've got an OB600 wash by Jenny Systems. This is an older light, it's not one of the new LED equipped ones, but it's still a nice bright white light when it behaves. The problem that it's having is that it's self test mode and it's demo modes work, but it stops responding to input from the computer and I'll show you in a few seconds what it does on the display board. Okay, I've just powered the fitting on and it is going through its calibration routine where it's busy learning its limits and its endpoints. I'm just initializing all its stepper motors and that. And then in a few seconds it will be ready for us to do a test. Okay, so it's learned all its home positions. I'm going to set it onto a demo mode. On. So as you can see, the pan and the tilt are working. In a few seconds you should see color coming as it opens the shutter. Okay, so there you can see it's you're doing its demo mode where it's doing its pan and tilt. It's opened its shutter, it's very bright. Now let me show you what the problem with this unit is. So if you look at the control board over here, we're going to set the DMX address, which is an address between 1 and 512. Let's go select. And that doesn't look like any number I know. Let's go through and 613, 737. It's supposed to be going sequentially. So something with the logic on this fitting is very confused. And also just something that I noticed, this fitting does hang upside down when installed. If you look over here, there is some gunk on the screws, which is seeping through. So let's open it to take a look. So inside here we've got our EMI filter. And it looks good, there's no signs of anything leaking out of there. Hiding under there we've got the hiding under there we've got the control transformer. Got a little cap. Got a little looks like an inrush protection there. But if you look over here at the back of this main cap, we got some leakage out of there. That's probably that stuff that we see all over the screws. Okay, let's go around to the logic board side. If you look over here, we've got a giant choke. That's for the bulb itself. And in down here, we have our fan. And under our fan, we have the control board. Now I want to get to the front of this control board to see what's going on, so I need to remove the handle and the screws on this side and this side which should let me get the board out. And there's our handle. We got the metal plates. Okay, so here's the main control board. From previous fittings like this that have opened, I know that these two are PIC microprocessors. That one is OB600U Master V1.0. That one's OB600U Display 1.0. And if you check over there, we've got a backup that just stores the settings and the address. And we've got our DMX interface driver over there, and it looks like they've red silicon them in. Then we just got our displays, 
bit of dust at the bottom here. Okay, so what's nice is if we look at the bottom here, we've got 5 volts and ground. So we can use that to check our power rail. Little capacitor over there. Just make sure our power rail is fine. Okay, now I'm going to hook an oscilloscope up because that will let me see the voltage and also see if there's any irregularities like ripple and things like that that could be a sign of a faulty capacitor. Let me hook this on ground. This unit is not powered on while I'm doing these connections. I don't want to slip to send 12 volts up the wrong side of the chip. Okay, so I've got a probe on 5 volts and on ground. And you look up at that trace there, that doesn't look bad. We've got 2 volts division, so that's... My point is uncalibrated oscilloscope, looks about right. Okay, the fitting has just switched off the control board as part of its initialization. While it's waiting for the bulb to strike and get up to a certain brightness. Okay, so now I've just turned it to half a volt per division and I've just adjusted the vertical position and as you can see it's still fairly stable uh, supply rail. And let's see how it's behaving now. 585, oh no. Okay, now I do actually have another one or two of these fittings around so I'm just going to try swapping out the display chip and seeing if that will sort it out. Back in a bit. Okay, so now from the other fitting that is working, I've pulled out the display driver microprocessor and the master microprocessor. We'll start by swapping just the display micro and seeing if we get any change. That's okay, I still got it. I found out where it flew away too. Okay, and here is our replacement. Let's give it a whirl. Wop wop. Okay, so it's 5 would be 2, 500, 500, 545, and nope, that didn't look like it's fisted. So let me go and remove the master micro, the brain. The problem with the discontinued fitting, you can't even get spares for this anymore. Okay, so I've put the new master in. No, that still looks pretty confused. So the next step is then we try to swap out the chip for the memory chip. What is this memory chip anyway? Just get some more lights on the situation. That is a 33L6. Uh, sorry. 93LC 46B. Oh, 33LC 46B. Okay. If you take a look there, 
93LC46B is a one kilobyte micro wire, three wire serial EEPROM with dedicated 16 bit memory organization and a voltage range of 2.5 to 5.5 volts. So that's what they use to store their configuration. So let's yank it out. Well, yank it out carefully. That one's been a bit stubborn because of that silicon they got on it. And in goes our donut chip. Got a big pen. Sorry. Now this does come from uh, the OB fitting. It was in use. And I don't think it contains any proprietary or calibration or anything. Hmm, that looks interesting. Let's just see something here. Okay, so let's go... Okay, I can see it's upside down, so... So it did obviously pick up orientation from the previous fitting. So, what's it? Chance of color, focus... I'll talk demo, soft. Use it, reset. Turn. Okay, turn, turn off, and yeah, now it's upright again. Let's go address 131, 130, 129R. That looks very promising indeed. Because now I'm getting sequential addresses. Let's see. Should let us go all the way down to. Okay, so we should wrap around all the way to 511 or so. 5.11 ok so now I'm going to shut it down, I'm going to put the original micro back in and the original display chip it looks like it could have just been that faulty memory module that's one wire EE prom So my guess is it writes the address to the EEPROM as you're busy changing through the display and then it reads it back or the display chip might read it straight from the EEPROM. So it's displaying the wrong thing and without being able to read the correct address because the EEPROM is corrupt that it doesn't know what to respond to when the computer is trying to address it. Okay, so new EEPROM, existing display chip, existing master chip, make sure that all those are tight. Okay, so now we've got address 506, 504, 503, okay. Let's set it to 490. Power cycle and it should remember 490. 490, okay, so it is remembering it. Next step is to plug in a DMX interface into a computer and see if we can control this light. Okay, so now on the freestyle software, I have picked up there, have fixtures. I've added the OB600 wash at 0101 or 101. So now I can. It tells you up there, so you can take a look at it. So there we go, we've got pan and tool control, that kind of control. We've got strobing.
<laughs> okay, so all we got left to do now is clean it up, button it up, do some lubrication, and also change out that faulty capacitor. Now we should be good to go. The capacitor is not really needed for the circuit, it's just to help balance out your power factor, so the utility company likes you. So, let's button it up. 